How vast is space really? Are we really alone? Is Earth the only inhabited planet in this big, vast, ever-expanding universe? And the star of all the questions, do the aliens really exist? Type 1 is planetary civilizations. It can harness the energy from nearby stars while collecting and store the energy for later use. It's possible that we'll need to harness 100,000 times our Earth's energy, putting all natural forces under our control. Just like how we use and store the solar energy to generate electricity, mine petrols and oils. Type 2 controls not only the transformation of light into energy, but also the entire level of control known as stellar culture. With an imaginary device known as the Dyson Sphere, its biggest benefit is that it catches all the energy from the starlight and stores it for later use. We can make an example of the mills that save energy for later use. It is said that nothing known to science has the ability to wipe out the Type 2 civilization. Even we humans have the possibility of going to any other type of planet if we ever exhaust the resources on Earth. Type 3 is the galactic culture, a cosmic civilization. This civilization could develop self-replicating robot colonies as they colonize stars across the galaxy. The species here could build Dyson spheres as they move across the galaxy, colonizing stars after stars. In short, it is a creation of a network that can be carried forward. Kardashev believed a Type 4 civilization was too advanced to go beyond the scale of Type 3. As for Type 4, the universal culture, it is a civilization that stretches throughout the entire universe. It travels through space, securing the power of a billion trillion suns. It also was summed up as being perpetually out of reach for humans. Experts say this species would be trapped in a black hole so big that only incorporeal entities, such as members of the movie Star Trek's Q Continuum, or the Gilfrians from Doctor Who could reach it. Again, there's a theory that is Type 5. It is a multiverse culture where aliens might truly exist since they can manipulate the cosmos on a grand scale. Freeman Dyson, a theoretical physicist, released his paper, Search for Artificial Stellar Sources of Infrared Radiation, in 1960. According to his research, civilizations must build massive man-made structures around stars in order to capture their energy thereby hiding them from the outside, just like how satellites are sent into outer space. It's possible that the appearance of the void and what is within it is being warped by a network of interconnected Dyson shells that we checked in Type II civilization. A massive intergalactic discovery by Robert Kishner in 1981. The Boatees Void. That's right, this void may just be the clue to the answer. Some things are not actually what they look like. One needs to thoroughly understand the concept before coming to a conclusion. Just like how everyone thought the fire is red, but it has its own reason to be a different color than how it looks to our naked eye. What if I told you that when masses collapse, followed by clusters of particles implosion, a void is formed. It results in a large expansion of space with few or no galaxies. It is amazing that with a diameter of 330 million light years, the Boötes void is said to make up 0.27% of the observable universe. Why is it so important? Let's start with the Big Bang Theory to get a better understanding of it. No, no, not the series you've watched. We are discussing the Big Bang Theory of how our universe came into existence. According to experts, the cosmos is 14 billion years old and has been expanding since its inception. Given the length of time that researchers have spent studying the Big Bang Theory, they have looked into the void that spans tens of millions of light years. It appears that what is in front of us is the Boatee's Void, a vast and desolate spherical area in space discovered by astronomer Robert Kirshner in 1981. Researchers say that it lies 700 million light years from the Earth. This huge void is believed to be at least 10 times larger in size than it should be, given the years the universe has seen. Right now, probably wondering how big the super void would be. It's huge in a way we can't imagine. It has a diameter of 330 million light years and is 0.27% of the visible universe's diameter. What if I told you the universe's biggest known vacuum as it is? So imagine it to be that huge. In the days following the discovery of the Boatee's Void, experts realized how wide and gigantic it is. At first, only eight galaxies were found, but it quickly grew to 60. It might seem like a lot, and try thinking about stumbling upon objects 60 miles long, stretching across a region the size of the continental United States. This is astronomer Greg Aldering who stated, if the Milky Way had been in the center of the Boatee's Void, we wouldn't have known there were other galaxies until the 1960s. This is smart. 
a little kid who is inspired by astronomer Greg Alderings and his theories. According to Greg Aldering, a supervoid is produced by the merging of smaller ones. So we can come to the conclusion that the Boaties void is the outcome of smaller ones merging together into a bigger one. That tube is most likely the remnants of the smaller voids. Do you know about Nikolai Samanovich Kardashev from Russia? He was one of the most influential radio astronomers of the past six decades. It's not the radio that is placed at the end of the classroom. Instead, it's a subfield of astronomy that studies celestial objects at radio frequencies and radio waves. Kardashev came up with an idea that the status of culture depends on two primary things. Can you guess what they could be? It comes at the cost of energy and technology. Nikolai Kardashev, an astrophysicist, has suggested that a civilization's technological development links to the energy it harnesses and forms. Imagine it this way. You can't lift up a heavy object with less energy. Similarly, a culture's growth is a product of energy and technology. When we have a power bank to charge our batteries, it is a social system where we display that our technology derives energy from it. A power bank is just a small piece from the list of advancements. Similarly, the more energy society can produce, the more technologically advanced they are. When the energy and technology are harnessing together, then it has three base classes, each with an energy disposal level. And they could be divided into three main types. This is humanity's achievement, sending an AI into space using just energy and technology to explore the unknown. These enhancements are based on the amount of energy accessed as well as the amount of information available to the civilization. If you are wondering where we humans fit into this picture, well, we are a sub-global culture of type zero, which derives its energy and raw materials from natural sources such as wood, coal, and oils. Various studies tried to solve the mystery and experts came up with their own stories. Let's come back to the Bote's Void. According to the Kardashev three-scale civilizations, remember when we spoke about the bubbles in the tube? Like the Dyson shell, this colonization bubble spread outwards from its home system, dimming each star that is close to it. Penn State University's Roger Griffith and co-authors developed a list of 93 potential galaxies. He studied the emission of radio frequencies of the best galaxies. This system gave the most useful explanation by a natural cosmic process. An expanding zone of Dyson spheres would enclose all the stars in a galaxy. As for the outcome, it would be a black galaxy in visible light, but a highly brilliant galaxy in infrared due to the Dyson spheres waste heat. As the stars engulf an expanding zone in a colonized galaxy, it would grow black, like a blinding black. But experts haven't found any such galaxies yet. It is known that colonizing every next star is impossible. But most probably, a very advanced civilization will end up being dominated by machines and will abandon biology entirely. Our Earth seems to be one of those. To summarize, there are galaxies inside the Boaties Void. However, they are all organized in a tube shape, which is an uncommon creation. This suggests that the Boaties Void was formed by the collision of smaller voids. There are various possibilities to every existing theory. There are several theories for everything. So time and time again, we can understand the piece of everything to nothing. So what is the point that struck you the most about the Boaties Void?